Okay, so now I'm going to have a go at the first exercise in lesson 17 of Codility. Uh, the lesson's on dynamic programming and it's called Number Solitaire. So let's get straight into this. Okay, a game for one player is played on a board consisting of n consecutive squares numbered from 0 to n minus 1. There is a number written on each square. A non-empty array A of n integers contains the numbers written on the squares. Moreover, some squares can be marked during the game. At the beginning of the game, there is a pebble on square number 0, and this is the only square on the board which is marked. The goal of the game is to move the pebble to square number n minus 1. During each turn, we throw a six-sided die with numbers from 1 to 6 on its faces, and consider the number k which shows the upper face after the die comes to rest. Then we move the pebble standing on square number i to square number i plus k, providing square number i plus k exists. If square number i plus k does not exist, we throw the die again until we obtain a valid move. Finally, we mark square number i plus k. After the game finishes, when the pebble is standing on square number n minus one, we calculate the result. The result of the game is the sum of the numbers on marked squares. For example, consider this game here. One possible game could be as follows. The pebble is on square number zero, which is marked. We throw three. The pebble moves to square number zero, from square number zero to square number three we mark square number three we throw five the pebble does not move since we cannot move to eight we throw two the pebble moves to square number five we mark this square and the game ends the marked squares are zero with a value of one three with a value of nine and five with a value of minus two so the result of the game is 1 plus 9 minus 2 is 8. This is a maximal possible result that can be achieved on this board. Write a function that given a non-empty array a of n integers returns a maximal result that can be achieved on the board represented by a. For example, given the array that we've just seen, the function should return 8 as explained above. Write an efficient algorithm for the following assumptions. n, which is the number of squares, is an integer in the range of 2 to 100,000. Each element of array A is an integer from minus 10,000 to 10,000. Okay, so the idea of dynamic programming is we work things out as we go along and we remember what we've worked out so far as we work through. So. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to scan through the array once and at each point in the array I'm going to create a new array and in that new array I'm going to store the maximum value that we can get so far. So for example at the first point the only value we can get is 1 because we start off with the value 1. At the next point we've got minus 2. We're going to look for the maximum value in that array of value so far we're going to go back six steps obviously at this point we can only go back one step we're going to go back six steps and find the maximum value one and add it to this value so the maximum value we could have here is minus two and one which is minus one at the next position we have zero go back six steps the maximum value we've got is one 1 plus 0 is 1. We have 9 here. Go back 6 steps. We can get a 1 is the maximum value. Add it to the 9. We've got 10. Minus 1. We go back 6 steps. The biggest value we find is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. And finally, minus 2. Go back 6 steps. We're still not able to go back 6 steps, but if the way was longer, we would just go back 6 steps. The maximum value we could find is 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. Then when we finish, we'll just look at the final value in this array here, and that's our answer. So let's have a go at implementing that.
Okay, so that's the class prepared with the solution there. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new interray and I'm going to call that R for result. Um, it's going to be the same length as A dot length. Then I'm going to loop through the indices from I is naught to R length. And I'm going to calculate R at that place. Now, if i is naught, then we don't want to go back at all. But the maximum value we can have in the result array is the value which is on the the board or the the value in the original array. Now I'm going to work out for all of the values the maximum value we can get. So I'll call this max on this square. Start it off at integer min value. And then I make another loop. This is going back. So I want to go back from one to six, which is the size of the dice. Now I'm gonna check I'm within range. So if I minus J is greater than or equal to zero, uh, so I'm not going back to negative positions. Uh, max on this square should be the maximum value of what we've calculated so far, max on this square, and what we've calculated to be the value at the previous square plus the value at this square. And then finally, R at this index equals max on this square. And then at the end, we just need to return R at R dot length minus one. And I think that's it. So I'll just test that and see. it comes up with the correct value. So I think to debug this, I'm just going to look at the calculation here and see if the array that I created R, this is the R array. It's the same as that. So we start off creating an empty R array. And then for each index at the first index, we set the R to just be what it was at the A array. So one. And at the second index, max on this square is a very small number. We go back one position, minus one. We can't go back to the other positions because they're too far. And R at that square equals minus one. At the next position, we start off with a very small number. We go back one place, we could have minus one. Go back two places, we could have one. We can't go back further, so the result is one. The next square, we go back one place, we could have 10, two places, 10, 10. And the value is 10. The next square, we could have nine. We're gonna stick with nine because all the other values are gonna be less. And the result is nine. The next square, we could, if we go back one square, we could have seven. If we go back two squares, we could have eight and then all the other values are going to be less and the result is eight and we return eight 
So I'm just going to check for corner cases. Um, so n is an integer within the range of 2 and 100,000. Well, if it's 2, it's still going to work. The first value will be the first value in the array. The second value will just go back 1. In fact, if it's 2, it's just simply the sum of them both, but that's fine. Each element of array A is an integer within the range of minus 10,000 and 10,000. Now, even if all of the values are 10,000, 10,000 times 100,000 is still going to fit in the range of an integer. So I don't think there's any, if it's minus 10,000, that's the same. Minus 10,000 times 100,000 is going to fit in the range of an integer. So I think that's it. I'm going to submit that and see how it does. Run the tests, there's nothing to import. That's okay, so let's submit that. I'm 100%, so that's my solution to Codility's number solitaire. Thanks for watching.